Hey guys, so today we're going to look at how to calculate both formula weight and then molar mass of compounds and elements. In order to do this, you're going to need a periodic table, so make sure you grab one of those out before you continue the video. So let's first talk about formula weight. Now, the formula weight of any compound is simply equal to the mass of every atom in that compound. Now, this is a single unit of this compound. So in the case of covalent molecules, it's of one molecule. And in the case of ionic compounds, it's one formula unit. So essentially, what we're looking at is the exact mass of exactly one of these species. So how do you find formula weight? Well, with formula weight, what you're going to do is you're going to look at your periodic table. Now, you'll see some numbers on your periodic table. One of those numbers represents the atomic mass or atomic weight of the element. All you're going to have to do is use that periodic table, use the compound's formula that you're given, add up the masses of every atom in that compound, and that in the unit atomic mass units is going to represent our formula weight of that compound. So let's take a look at a periodic table. I want you to first know how to identify the mass of each atom. So we're going to look at a few examples, and I'm going to have you guys look for a couple on your own. So the first one we want to look at is carbon. Now, carbon is represented by the abbreviation C. All right, it is going to be the sixth atom on the periodic table. So its atomic number is six. That tells you it has six protons. And if you look, you can see its atomic mass is 12.011. This means if you have a large sample of carbon atoms, including all isotopes, the average weight of all of those atoms is going to be 12.011, in this case, atomic mass units. When we're talking about a single atom, that's the key factor. We're looking at atomic mass units. So carbon's atomic mass would be 12.011 AMU. Now, it's important to note that not every periodic table is going to show the atomic mass to the same number of decimal places. For example, you might see a carbon on your periodic table with 12.01. Or on some, you might actually even see it as 12.0. So be aware that different periodic tables are going to show it differently. For chemistry purposes this year, I want to make sure that you use whatever value is listed on the official periodic table that you're given. So let's look at another example. Now we're going to look at potassium. Potassium is the 19th element on the periodic table. It's represented by the letter K. And the atomic mass of potassium is 39.098 atomic mass units, or AMU. So now that we've done a couple together, I want you to now find the atomic mass of a fluorine atom. Take a second, look at your periodic table, pause the video if you need to. When you find it, unpause the video. When you come back, we'll talk about it. All right, now fluorine on the periodic table is represented by the letter F. It's atomic number nine, which tells you that it has nine protons. And if you look at the atomic mass, the mass of fluorine is 18.998 AMU. This means on average, a fluorine atom is gonna have a mass of 18.998 AMU. So let's look at another example. All right, I want you guys to take a second and find silver on the periodic table. Once you find silver, I want you guys to then tell me what its atomic mass is. So take a second, pause the video if you need to, find silver, unpause the video when you get your answer, and we'll go from there. Okay, now silver is a tricky one because silver on the periodic table, the atomic symbol isn't exactly what you'd expect. The atomic symbol of silver is AG. So AG on the periodic table, its atomic number is 47, and its atomic mass, if you find it, is 107.868 AMU. This means that in a large sample of silver atoms, on average, they'd weigh about 107.868 atomic mass units. So now let's look at how to find the atomic mass of a compound. We're going to look at an ionic compound here, potassium fluoride. Now, potassium fluoride is a binary compound. It's made of simply two different 
ions, a potassium ion and a fluorine ion. This means that we're going to look for potassium on the periodic table, and then we're also going to look for fluorine on the periodic table. In order to find the atomic mass of this compound on a whole, what we're going to need to do is simply add together the masses of every atom in the compound. So we've already found both the masses of potassium, 39.098, and fluorine, 18.898. So what we're simply going to do is add these two values together, and it's going to give us the atomic mass of a potassium fluoride formula unit, which is 58.096 AMU. So that was formula weight. Now let's talk about molar mass. So if the formula weight is the weight of a single atom or a single molecule or a single formula unit, the molar mass is going to represent the mass of one mole of atoms or molecules or formula units. The most helpful component of this is the fact that numerically it doesn't change. The only thing that changes is the units. So for example, we said that carbon has an atomic mass of 12.011 AMU. This means that carbon has a molar mass of 12.011 grams per mole. This is a very simple conversion. So just like we calculated the formula weight, we're going to use the same numbers to calculate molar mass. We're just going to change up the units a little bit. So let's get right into an example of how to calculate the molar mass of a compound. We're going to look first at carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a molecular compound. It's a molecular compound because it's comprised of only nonmetals, carbon and oxygen. Now for carbon dioxide, what we're going to first do is identify the molar mass of each atom in the compound. Carbon weighs 12.011 grams per mole. And oxygen weighs 15.999 grams per mole. Now here's the thing. With carbon dioxide, we have one carbon atom but two oxygen atoms. So what we're going to have to do is add our 12.011 to both 15.999 and then again 15.999. So in other words, 15.999 times 2. Add those values together, and we get our total molar mass of 44.001 grams per mole. All right, so let's take a look at a more complex example. Here we're looking at aluminum nitrate. Now this is an ionic compound. We know it's an ionic compound because it's made of aluminum, which is a metal, and nitrate, which is a polyatomic anion. In order to find the molar mass of this compound, what we're going to have to do is, as always, look for the mass of each element in the compound. So aluminum, the molar mass of aluminum is 26.98 grams per mole. Molar mass of nitrogen is 14.00 grams per mole. And the molar mass of oxygen is 16.00 grams per mole. Now, once we've done this, we can actually do it two ways. Either we find the molar mass of the nitrate ion and then multiply it by 3, or we use the fact that there are three nitrate ions to tell us that there are three nitrogen atoms and nine oxygen atoms. And we simply multiply those atomic masses by those respective numbers. I prefer to find the mass of the nitrate ion together and then simply multiply that value by 3. But it doesn't matter how you do it. So we said that nitrogen has a molar mass of 14.00, and oxygen has a molar mass of 16.00. This means we're going to multiply the oxygen by 3, giving us a value of 48 grams per mole. And we're going to add that to the 14 from the nitrogen, giving us a total of 62 grams per mole. This means that the nitrate ion weighs 62 grams per mole. There are three of them. This means we have to multiply 62 by 3, which is going to give us a value of 186. We add this value to the mass of aluminum, which is 26.98, and we get a total molar mass of this compound of 212.98 grams per mole. So I want you guys to take a look at this molecule. Now this is sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Right? I want you to tell me what is the molar mass of sulfuric acid. So take a second, pause the video if you need to. Find the molar mass. When you do, unpause the video, come back, and we'll work through it together. 
All right, so now we've had a few seconds to work on it. Let's go through it together. The sulfuric acid molecule is comprised of three different elements. This is going to be hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. We're going to look at the molar mass of each one first. So the molar mass of hydrogen is 1.01 grams per mole. The molar mass of sulfur is 32.06 grams per mole. And the molar mass of oxygen is 16.00 grams per mole. Sulfate, the polyatomic ion, is going to be comprised of four oxygen atoms and one sulfur atom. So we're going to take our 16.00 grams per mole of oxygen, multiply it by four. This gives us a value of 64 grams per mole of just oxygen. We're going to add this to the sulfur, which is 32.06, giving us a total mass of 96.06 .06 grams per mole and then add that to the 1.01 grams per mole of hydrogen, giving us a total molar mass of 98.08 .08 grams per mole for our sulfuric acid molecule. All right, guys, so here's a harder one. I want you to take a second, pause the video if you need to, find the molar mass of this compound, C7H8N4O2. All right, so once you find the molar mass of the compound, unpause the video, and we'll come back and we'll explain it together. All right, so now I've had a few seconds to work it out. Let's do it together. Carbon, each atom has a molar mass of 12.01 grams per mole. So the total mass of carbon in our compound is 84.07 grams. Now, the hydrogen each has a molar mass of 1.01 grams per mole. There are eight of them. So the total mass of hydrogen atoms is going to be 8.08 .08 grams per mole. Nitrogen has a molar mass of 14 0.00 grams per mole times 4. So that's going to give us a total molar mass of 56 grams per mole. Oxygen, molar mass of 16 grams per mole. Two of them, which means we have a total molar mass of 32 grams per mole. We're going to add all these values together to give us a total molar mass of this compound of 180.12 grams per mole. All right, guys, you ready for a really hard one? I want you to find the molar mass of this complex ionic compound. In this compound, we've got a lot of atoms and a lot of subscripts. So make sure you take your time, work carefully through it, pause the video, take a few seconds, find the molar mass. When we come back, we'll work through it together. All right, so first of all, when we solve this problem, I like to split up the polyatomics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the masses of each polyatomic first, and then we'll solve it from there. So the first polyatomic, C5H5N. Now this polyatomic ion has five carbons, so we're going to take our 12.01 molar mass of carbon, multiply it by five. Hydrogen. There are five of those, so we're going to take our 1.01 .01 and multiply it by five. And nitrogen, there's only one, so we're just going to take the mass of 14.00 by itself. We add these all together, and we get a total molar mass of this polyatomic ion of 79.10 grams per mole. However, there are four of them in this compound, which means we need to multiply that 79.10 by four, giving us a total molar mass of this ion as being 316.40 grams per mole. So that's the first polyatomic ion. Let's look at the last polyatom polyatomic ion. Now this polyatomic ion, NCS6, has one nitrogen, 14.00 grams per mole, one sulfur, 32.06 grams per mole, and one carbon, 12.01 grams per mole. We add all these values together to get a molar mass of 58.07 grams per mole. We then multiply that by 6, giving us a value of 348.82 grams per mole. So now we know the amounts of these two polyatomic ions. We need to add in the mass of copper, which is 63.55 grams per mole. We add these three values together. We get a total molar mass of the compound of 728.77 grams per mole. That one was a tough one, all right? So that wraps up today's video. Let's do a quick recap. Today we talked about not just how to find formula weight, but also molar mass utilizing the periodic table. 
I'd like to thank Ryan Lewis and Seamus Kilgariff for writing, filming, and editing this video. Thank you guys so much for watching it. I'll see you in the next one.